ಕರ್ಪೂರಗೌರಂ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಾರ ಭುಜಗೇಂದ್ರಹಾರ ಸದಾವಸಂತ ಹೃದಯ ಬಿಂದೆ ಭವ ಭವಾನಿ ಸಹಿತ Thank you. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Uh, hello Karan. Hi. Uh, there are two questions. If the first one is answered, I don't need the second one's answer. Uh, there's a request. Uh, can I please get a hug from you Sadhguru? Hey, why don't you try him? <laughs> why am I a second in that line? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name the person. <laughs> what is your second question? The first is you want a hug. The second Actually, is what you can't… You don't go into a kiss then because that <laughs> might be detrimental. <laughs> no, uh, just the presence of Sadhguru for the first time in my life, I just don't want to miss it. I don't know when will I get the chance next. So, uh, if I could just… <laughs> I know it's a difficult one. No, no, nothing difficult about it. It is just that… Uh, I've been working with people to make them understand people, especially outside the country and now unfortunately it's caught up here. Uh, where is my hug Sadhguru? Can I get my hug? You are turning something beautiful into something very ugly. When you are in a certain state of inclusiveness, if it became necessary, you embrace somebody. It's a very beautiful act. Now it's a commodity, where is my hug? It's something that you give and take, it's not a transaction. This is what religion has done, everybody hugs three times or four times or whatever number of times. This is not what it is. All the, the tenderness that a human being feels within himself or herself, you destroying it and make it into some kind of act. Okay, I will hug you, I'll hug every one of you, what about it? Sweat exchange? <laughs> so, this is something we need to do and people also… In India this happens, they grab my hand and Sadhguru bless me and they place it on their own head <laughs> <laughs> Blessing will not come like this. Blessing will come when you become receptive, when you're in a certain way, if it's blessed, something wonderful can happen out of it, something tremendous can happen out of it. You grab my hand and <laughs> what is that blessing <laughs> And if you grab my hand or foot or you hug me forcefully, this is called molestation <laughs> Awesome. All right. You can got I, your… Can you I got your jadu ki chappi. Sir, we had… Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. Namaskar Sadhguru. I know a hug is not possible but I know you cook very good dosa. Is that possible? <laughs> uh, certainly not here. <laughs> I know. No, my question is um, that uh, when we cook, if we have to get joy, joy of cooking, then that joy is something which is internal and I cook uh, for my, my joy. But when you're cooking for others, then you want to give them joy and at times there is a, there's a conflict, who should win? This is for him? No, no. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have different things on my menu <laughs> <laughs> See, let us not make everything this is the most fundamental thing of what being spiritual or spiritual process means just this. You… essentially spiritual process means this, that you live here like only you exist, nobody else but you. Because you see everybody as yourself and uh, there's no issue. People ask me, Sadhguru, wherever you go, whether it's uh, ten thousand people or hundred thousand people, how do you speak? Ah, well, I'm talking to them like I… if at I… if I had the habit, I don't have. 
If I have the habit of talking in front of my mirror, how I would speak to myself, that's how I'm speaking. There is no… You, you… what I'm doing is not some kind of oratory or discourse, I'm just talking like I would talk to myself because I don't see anybody but myself. So, spiritual process means just this, that in some way you became all-inclusive. In your experience you became all-inclusive. So, one thing that has disappeared from your life is comparison and competition. Comparison starts and then it transforms itself into competition and then it goes into ugly things. So even for something as alive and beautiful as joy, joy is… <laughs> joy is the most important aspect of your life, you know. That is, joy means your experience of you being… your existence is fantastic. Your, ex your experience of your existence has become beautiful, that's why you're joyful. Now, I'm not joyful because I make… I make the best dosas, not you, okay? <laughs> not because I make the best dosas, nor will I be super joyful because I eat whatever the best things that you cook. Before I come into your restaurant, I'll be very joyful. If you make something good, I will eat joyfully. If you make something bo good, very joyfully I will push it aside. But with your good cooking or bad cooking, you can't steal my joy, nor can you give my joy. I want you also and everybody in the world to become like this, that somebody else cannot determine what happens within you. Because yes, you are… you are calling fundamental sense of slavery that you get into with beautiful names, this is dangerous. So anyway, people are saying wonderful things about your cooking. They have not said anything about you, but they have said wonderful things about your cooking, I would like to eat one day. <laughs> I don't know if I can afford it, but <laughs> Yes, ma'am. We get a mic for you, ma'am. Namaste Sadhguruji, my name is Devika Patel and I'd like to ask you a question because you're a mystic and even otherwise, please don't say I don't care because many people out here I'm sure don't. My question is, uh, what do you think of reincarnation? Do you believe in it and if so, uh, can you elaborate on the subject and t let us know uh, what you were in your last birth. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> now you already put strictures on me <laughs> as to what I should not say. For me, last three lifetimes have been same work, around the same place and a few people, handful of people, same people, to such an extent that sometimes by mistake I end up calling them by old names. But you should not believe all this nonsense. <laughs> no, because the moment you believe it, you will look at this person and little if they are friendly with you, Oh, maybe in my last life, <laughs> my past life, it is very good you don't remember a thing about anything because in your present life, you are not able to handle the emotional tangles and psychological involvements with people. If you remember ten lifetimes, you will break your mind. It takes an extraordinary sense of dispassion to download many lifetimes of memory and still not respond or react to those things and simply see it for what it is. In your present state, if such things happen, it'll be a disaster. But anyway, you should not believe these things because you should not believe anything or anybody. You should not disbelieve them either. 
Now in such a large crowd, I have a huge reputation of being very logically correct and now you're making me say such stupid things, I'm staking my reputation. You must understand that I wouldn't make that mistake because I don't gain anything by talking about this, because you insisted that I should not dis dismiss it. But essentially what you are asking is, let me translate this question for you. Essentially what you are asking is, when you say, is there a past life or is there a future life, what you are asking is, beyond this body, is there something more? That's all you are asking. After my death, or before my birth, was there something else? This is the question. Or you're asking what is the nature of my existence? Well, that's my full-time business to bring you to that experience as to what is the nature of your existence. You must come. You should not ask just a casual question here in Mumbai and disappear. Now you made me say illogical things in front of all these people. Now you must invest some time to know what is the nature of your existence. Otherwise, it's entertainment question. I don't know, uh, you have a color you like? <laughs> don't uh, ask <laughs> He's working hard but uh, after him I'm afraid of hard working. Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 hard working in blue. No, 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 we'll get you a mic. Uh, we have just two questions after this gentleman. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get there, right there. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Namaskaram, Please somebody give a mic uh, to that lady who's up there with her hand up after this boy is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pranam Sadhguru. Uh, Sadhguru, my name is Aishwarya Nigam and uh, I have been to the ashram many times and I have read many of your books. You must quickly come to the question. The Everybody question is, is Sadhguru, I am stuck here and I want you to please guide me, tell me in a child's language what is the answer and what is the solution. I don't want to give importance to my own thoughts and emotion. Tell me how. Please make me understand. I don't know when will I get this mic again. Although I am always in your presence, but I, I, I want the answer, Sadhguru. I don't want when to When you get out of this hall, start walking south. If it's a genuine question, if it's a question which truly matters, you must seek. I would have gone to the ends of the world if I found somebody who could answer the billion questions I had. If really it matters to you, the question, you must seek, if you think going south is the answer. If you don't think so, you shouldn't bother with me. If you think so, you shouldn't waste a moment of your life because I want everybody to at least be straight and some basic integrity to your life. You ask big questions and you leave it and go and sit in the matinee show. I'm not saying you should not go to the mat, I'm sorry <laughs> I'm saying the wrong things, wrong examples <laughs> That's fine, no offense taken <laughs> So, I want you to understand, people, somebody came and asked me recently, Sadhguru, are you a devotee of Shiva? I said, you fool, did you ever see me sitting somewhere and doing Shiva puja? Did you see me? My entire bloody life, I've invested in you, all right? There is nothing else I do except constantly seeing how to raise people to the next step. And you are asking me, I am a devoted to somebody, I am bloody devoted to you and you're not seeing it. So, when you ask this question, I take the question seriously, I believe you're genuine. But then you go and get drunk today evening, I am not against any of those things, matni or drink or this or that. All I am saying is, you must have some integrity to your life. When you ask a big question, you must make the investment, isn't it, of time and energy? You must invest life, because to bloody answer this, I've invested my entire life. <laughs> yes? Uh, 
Sadhguru, you had pointed out there was yes to the lady, the right, lady at the back, right at the back. I have a question. One moment, sir. We're just going to the lady, and then we'll get where. Where? Who's that? She, she, she still right. doesn't have the microphone. He's on now. Okay, you're on the mic. All right. Go Namaskaram, ahead. Namaskaram, Sadhguruji. My question is, what can be the greatest change one can uh, bring to our life to make it uh, more blissful in this birth? You got to change. You have to. You got to change. You got to change. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> you think by doing something else, this will become blissful? No. This one has to change to become blissful. Yes, the lady. Has she got the mic? Yes. Just reaching you, ma'am. Namaskar to one and all. So my question is, I get very attached easily and now I feel I'm very attached to my responsibilities. So how do I break this bondage and if I really want to do something for myself, not for anybody, just to feel the joy that I've been listening to you. If I want to really, really feel that joy, how do I break the bondage of responsibilities and move ahead and how do I overcome my attachments? <laughs> I want you to understand that responsibility is never a bondage. Responsibility means you chose to respond to something wholeheartedly. So it is never a bondage. And how is it opposing your joy, I don't understand. Because to what extent you have the ability to respond, only to that extent you know life. If you lose your ability to respond, you become dead. In fact, somebody is dead means they've lost all ability to respond, that's all it is. So, don't ever think your responsibility is stopping you from being joyful. If you had no responsibilities, many of you would be freaked to madness. You are fortunate, you got something to dabble with. Nothing to do, I'll keep you in a room, nothing to do, I'll feed you well, you'll go crazy. You must be glad there are distractions for your madness. So, you must understand this. If… if your experience of life is such that if you sit here, you start enjoying your existence, not your thought, not your emotion, not your action, <laughs> your existence, if you start enjoying, you have a certain joy and blissfulness about your very existence, then all this jargon doesn't work. If that one thing has not happened to you, you are in a desperate condition, you have to do a million things to know a little bit of pleasantness. But tell me sincerely, genuinely, in a twenty-four hour segment, how many moments of actual joy do you know? Most people can count on their fingers, many people have nothing to count. They will say, oh, the day I got married, I was so happy. The day I got my job, I was so happy. It happened, it's history. Because it is externally instigated. Otherwise, by yourself, you will become a wreck. Please change this then all these jargons and philosophies are irrelevant to you because you know the joy of your existence. Thank you. We have one last question. Yes, sir. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm just going from this gentleman, I'll come to you. That may be too bad. Yes. So good. Uh, I'll leave that to Sadhguru after this, how many more he'd like to answer, but yes. Sadhguruji, Namaskaram, Karanji, Namaskaram. Namaskaram. I'm Mohit Sadhana, I've come from Karnal just to see you live and I'm feeling blissfully blessed. I didn't come with a question, but now I have a question. Sadhguruji, you just made a mention that word does not know anything about you and that remains a fact. Even then, any somebody from the world who comes in little contact with you gets so much benefited. So when would you reveal? Or my question is, what does it take to become an Arjuna for the yogi of highest order of our times, our Krishna, the you to reveal? 
Sorry if I, that question is still invalid. Uh, this is this is difficult to articulate without sounding all wrong because see everybody is working or everybody is trying to live their life with different frames that they have created for themselves you can call this mindsets, you can call this framework, you can call this family, you can call this society, you can call this ethics, morals, ideologies, whatever. These are all frameworks you created. But you understand, a frame means you are putting a self-imposed limitation upon yourself. I can understand he being a director, producer, he is thinking of frames because he is thinking of capturing something for doing something else. I am asking you a simple question, do you want to capture this life or do you want to experience this life? Hello? You want to experience this life. You are here to experience this life and know the reason. Everything else is secondary. When I say life, when I s use the word life, most of you will think, oh, my work, my family, my home, my car, my dog, that's not life. These are all accessories to life. You added all these accessories believing that with these accessories your life will get enhanced. But your money, your wealth, your family, your relationships, these are all just accessories, isn't it? The real thing is here never experienced. So, to first make somebody… I'm… you know, there are many wonderful people around me. This is the biggest wealth I have. I have some truly, absolutely fabulous people around me all the time. They won't let me pass through a single day without tears of joy, love, ecstasy, without witnessing this, a single day won't pass for me, no matter which part of the world I'm in. I don't think this better wealth in the world, in the physical world, in the human societies than that, that constantly you're surrounded by people who are shedding tears of love and ecstasy. Having said that, their experience might have become beautiful, by being in a certain presence, by realizing a few things, but still, they still have frameworks. Because very few individuals have the sense of… a total sense of abandon to be here without framework. As long as you're with the framework, we can add one drop here, one drop there, one more drop means it'll break. So in my life, if <laughs> by the time I fall dead, if I can share maybe one or two percentages of what I have known, I think I'm very fortunate because I'm still looking, I'm not given up on it. There can always be one or two individuals who will come up we have been working on them, preparing them so that somebody can exist here without any sense of frames, without any sense of what will be lost. There are many people around me who, you know, in every action that they do, they're not saying it verbally, in every action that they do, they show that they're willing to die for me. I keep reminding them in a thousand ways, dying for me is not the answer. That you are willing to allow this life to happen in full flow, this is where the answer is. Because only if you are a full-fledged life can I share what's happening within me. Otherwise, I'm talking about extending your frames giving you a different frame which is 
more difficult to manipulate <laughs> but totally undoing the frames will need this, that you are a full-fledged life. When I say a full-fledged life, right now you have invested too much in your thought, too much in your emotion, you look up to something, you look down on something, you like something, you dislike something. In this state, it cannot be done. I'm working on people, a lots of them, and I'm also scanning the world because there could be anybody somewhere because that will be a blessing, not to me, but to the world. If… if there can be human beings, not one, if there can be a thousand human beings on this planet, or if there can be ten thousand human beings or a million human beings who are just life, noble, just life, because this is the only thing that you're aspiring for. You may think you want money, you may think you want pleasure, you may think you want something, no. You are only wanting to having a larger slice of life somehow, isn't it? That's all there is, because that is all there is. You think money will get that, education will get that, love will get that, pleasure will get that, but essentially you want a larger slice of life. So if you want in slices, we will cut it and serve it because we have to keep you going, otherwise you'll run away. <laughs> but I want to see you a day when I can throw life at you just like that without making slices out of it. That would be a great day. Make it happen because I want to change. I want to change the perception of what is street? If you say street, if you use the word street, people will think booze, people will think drugs, people will think prostitution, all the ugly things. If we do the right things, in the next twenty, twenty-five years, we can change this, that street means beauty, Street means love, street means meditativeness, street means spiritual process, street means the highest things. We can do this if we are willing. We have the tools, we have the means. Why I'm saying this is never before, many great beings have come, but nobody had the means that we have today. A Krishna came, a gentle being when he spoke, only one man heard, yes, and another man overheard. <laughs> when Adiyogi Shiva came, only seven people heard. Today we have the ability, we can sit here and speak to every human being on the planet. Never before this was possible. Now we have such an ability to communicate. If we do not communicate the right things, we are committing a crime against humanity. So when we have this kind of power to communicate, whatever is the highest dimension of life should become street. I… my essential work is this, to bring down spirituality from mountain tops to street. Samsara Saram Bhujagir